Time Travelers with your hosts, Sean and Marianne Gauntlet. <laughs> well, welcome to this episode, actually our first episode of Our Haunted Travels. I'm your host, Sean Donnelly. And I'm your co-host, Marianne Donnelly. Uh, Our Haunted Travels is a series of vlogs, podcasts, books we're trying to get done of different locations that you can find in the PanicD.com database that we have actually visited. Mm -hmm. And this summer we actually sat down and brainstormed and went over those locations that's in the database and it's well over 180. So we got enough material that we can do these for a while. That we, it's over 180 that we've been to. That we've been to. Right. Um, there's close to 800 locations plus in the database. Right. But um, So we decided we want to put together this series and talk about the different locations um, that we travel to and we actually do research and investigations and things like that. So that's why we're titling this Our Haunted Travels. Mm -hmm. Well, this episode, which will be episode number one, we are actually talking about... Abraham Lincoln's tomb, mm -hmm. which we just visited. We did. What was the date? Two days ago. Two days ago. So that November was... 9th, 2017, we visited. Because right. today is November 11th, Veterans Day. So happy Veterans Day to our veterans out there. We mm -hmm. actually caught a parade earlier today. And, we did. Um, waved and said thank you to all the veterans that are here in we're actually not at our home base. We're actually in St. Louis right now recording this. But uh. Right. So for those of you, just real quickly, Lincoln's tomb is not in St. Louis. No, it's not. It's actually in Springfield, Illinois. We're about an hour and a half to two hours away It was an hour right and now. 40 minutes, I believe. And so we actually drove from St. Louis up to Springfield yes. to go and visit the tomb we while we were here. We were in and we drove up there. So um, there is another video that's already out there. Uh, we just put it out earlier today. That's called Lincoln's Tomb Photos Only, which is all the photos that Marianne took, which was well over 170 <laughs> some photos. Um, but we're going to be using some of them in this video. Um, you can actually look that that video up too. And hopefully we're going to be doing another um, our haunted travels on Lincoln's home which we also visited and so let me talk about the format a little bit since this is our first one um, this is roughly based on our radio segment that we do with Beyond the Edge Radio BTE Radio which is called the Haunted Spotlight um, but when we do those uh, radio spotlights we have like 15-20 minutes tops and it's great. We do it like every two weeks, and now I think it's going to go monthly mm -hmm. when we start going. But we get a lot of information about uh, locations. Right. So we thought we would take that and kind of extend it a little bit and add um, more of, you know, the way it's broken down is the same way that it's in the PanicD database, where we have the history of the locations, stories about the locations, um, paranormal claims for the location. Uh, we have the demographic information, which is the address and stuff, and whether it's open to the public or not. Um, but there's also links for evidence. So if you're paranormal investigators and you've been out there, or just regular people and you've been to these locations and you've taken photos or have audio recordings or whatever, let us know. Send us the information. We'll give you credit for that and we'll link to it um, to keep building the database. Um, but with the uh, uh, Art Haunted Travels, we're going to add two more sections to this format, which is also in the uh, book format that we started too. And that is why we think the location could have potential uh, for paranormal activity. And then our personal experiences, because we've vis visited those locations. Uh, what we ran into, what we experienced, and things like that. So anyways, that's, uh, that's Art Haunted Travels in a nutshell. Um, okay, so this episode we're talking about Abraham Lincoln's tomb, which um, is located at 
It's actually Panic D1973. Do I have that right? Yes. yes. 1973. And it's located at 1500 1500 Monument Avenue in Springfield, Illinois. The location is open to the public. There are certain hours it's not open at night. I believe it's 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. And this, it's actually in a cemetery. I, does, I do know it closes And the at cemetery five. locks its gates at 5.30. So you, it, you've got to be out. You have to be out of the monument at 5, and you got to be out of the cemetery at 5.30. Hmm. Okay. Well, we were way out of there. We were, we, yeah, we were gone by um, then. But for the history and stories, I'm going to turn it on over to... Marianne. Now we may cut away from this video, we're going to keep recording the audio, um, and show you some pictures, pictures of what we're as we're about. going along. Now we're also going to release this as a podcast eventually too. So if you're listening to us as a podcast, um, go to our YouTube channel, which is um, youtube.com slash panicdvideos. And you can look up episode number one for our Hana Travels, and you can see some of the video and photos that go along with this. Mm -hmm. So, for the history and stories, take it away. All right, so from our Panic D database, uh, the Lincoln Tomb State Historic Site is the final resting place of Abraham Lincoln, his wife Mary, and three of his four sons, Edward, William, and Thomas, or Tad, as we all know him. Their eldest son, Robert Lincoln, is not buried there with them. He's actually buried at Arlington National Cemetery. Also on the site is the public receiving vault, where the final funeral services were held for President Lincoln on May 4 of 1865. Constructed at about 1860, the vault is at the base of the hill just north of the tomb. The Lincoln Tomb was designated as a National Historic Landmark in 1960. It was placed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1966. The tomb is operated by the Illinois Historic Preservation Agency. The tomb was designed by sculptor Larkin Mead and is constructed of brick sheathed with Quincy granite. The base is 72 feet square with a large semi circular projections at the north and south sides. Double sets of stairs lead to a terrace above which rises the 117 foot tall obelisk. At the corners of the shaft, large pedestals serve as bases for four bronze sculpture groups, each representing one of the four Civil War military services, infantry, artillery, cavalry, and navy. A taller base on the obelisk's south side holds a heroic bronze statue of Lincoln. In front of the tomb is a bronze reproduction of Gutston Borglum's marble head of Lincoln, which is displayed at the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C. Interior rooms of the tomb are finished in highly polished marble trimmed with bronze. The south entrance opens into a rotunda where hallways lead to the burial chamber. The rotunda and corridors contain reduced scale versions of important Lincoln statues, as well as plaques with excerpts of Lincoln's farewell address to Springfield, the Gettysburg Address, and his second inaugural address. President Lincoln's remains rest in concrete vault 10 feet below the marble floor of the burial chamber, a massive granite cenotaph Marking the gravesite is flanked by the presidential flag and flags of the states in which Lincoln's ancestors and Abraham Lincoln himself resided. Crypts in the chamber's south wall hold the remains of Mary, Edward, Willie, and Tad Lincoln. The remains of President Lincoln and his son Willie were placed in the receiving vault from May 4 of, through December 21 of 1865. Then, from December 21st of 1865 through September 19th of 1871, the remains of President and his two sons, Eddie and Willie, were moved into a temporary above-ground tomb constructed on the northeast side of the hill, where the current tomb now stands. Tad Lincoln, the President's youngest son, died July 15th of 1871. His remains were the first to be interred in today's tomb, 
followed by those of his father and his two brothers on September 19th of 1871. Mary Lincoln died at her sister's home in Springfield on July 16 of 1882, and she was laid to rest with her martyred husband and dear sons a few days later. Construction of the Lincoln Monument began in 1868. It was dedicated in 1874 in a ceremony attended by President U.S. Grant. Due to the design and construction faults, the tomb was extensively rebuilt in 1900 to 1901 and again in 1930 to 1931. Because of security concerns, you know, thieves had attempted to steal Lincoln's body in 1876, Lincoln's body's remains were moved to their final resting place below the floor of the burial chamber after the first renovation, and the second reconstruction also involved a complete redesign of the interior of the tomb, including creation of the inside corridors, installation of the marble and bronze ornamentation, and addition of the small statues. The Borglum bust outside the tomb was installed at that same time. Some stories um, are that there are sightings of the former president almost since the day his body was arriving there in Springfield on May 3rd of 1865. After laying in state in the Capitol for a night, the body was placed in a receiving vault at Oak Ridge Cemetery. In December, Lincoln's remains were removed to a temporary vault not far from the now new proposed memorial site. In 1871, three years after laborers began constructing the permanent tomb, the body of Lincoln and those of the three youngest of his sons were placed in crypts in the unfinished structure. The construction of the permanent tomb lasted for years, and it was at this time the first sightings of the spectral Abraham Lincoln were reported as he wandered near the crypt. Others would report hearing the sounds of crying and footsteps near the site. In 1874, upon completion of the memorial, Lincoln's remains were interred in a marble sarcophagus in the center of the chamber known as the catacombs or burial room. In 1876, however, after several Chicago criminals broke into the tomb intending to kidnap the corpse and hold it for ransom, however, the attempt failed as one of the men in the gang was actually a spy for the Secret Service. But over the years, the legends have persisted as tourists and staff members report uncomfortable feelings, phantom footsteps, whispers, muffled voices, and weeping. Among, um, with other former presidents, Oak Ridge Cemetery also has reports of apparitions of a small boy and a mysterious woman in a red cape that have also been seen on the property, but we did not encounter her or the little boy. Some paranormal claims. That's usually your job, so I'm so going to pass this over to you. So, in the database, we have five different uh, paranormal claims for this location. Uh, I think Marianne covered them, but we'll go over them again. Um, people have reported uncomfortable feelings. Um, reported hearing phantom footsteps, have reported hearing whispers or muffled voices, they've reported hearing weeping or crying noises, and people have also reported seeing the apparition of Lincoln himself around the burial chamber. So at this point, this is normally where we end the haunted spotlight. Correct. However, we have some more information for you. Um, so let's start off talking about the funeral train itself. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. I would like to do another show just on the funeral train because... Oh, it's just, easy. Yes. Yeah, just there's that so itself. And then there's stops. paranormal things about the funeral train itself. Mm -hmm. However, for those of you who don't know, um, the president obviously passed away in Washington, D.C. at Ford's Theater. And it was decided by, actually, not Mary Todd Lincoln, which is what I thought it was. It was decided by people of Springfield. 
that he's buried in Springfield. But she was a big proponent of it. She wanted him to be buried there. In Springfield? Yes. Not true. What? Not true. Not what I read today. See, I thought that was the case, too. Yeah. She wanted him to be buried in Springfield. That's not true. She wanted him to either be buried in Chicago or in Washington, D.C., in the vacant tomb that was built for uh, George Washington. That's where she wanted him to go. However, her son, Robert, talked her into Springfield as the location if they took Tad as well. Okay. 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 So, herein lies the funeral train, the funeral procession or to bring the Willie? body. It could have been Willie. Okay. Might have been Willie. Okay. The small one that died in D.C. Okay. The funeral train started in Washington, D.C., hit 19 different, 18 different cities before it went to Springfield. Okay. The train took the same path that Lincoln took when he went from Springfield to Washington, D.C. as president-elect. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it hit cities. Uh, I don't know all of them. I don't have them in front of me. Um, I know it did hit Baltimore, Maryland, because when it stopped there, Robert got off the train and went back to D.C. Right. Why? I would like to research that, but probably because his mom was going nuts. She wasn't on the train. Okay. He later took a train directly to Springfield and met the train there for right. the funeral. Okay. Right. However, it hit Cleveland. We participated in we that. We did. Uh, uh, not the original. <laughs> not the original. No, we're not, we're that, not old. that old. <laughs> um, the reenactment. Uh, it did hit uh, Chicago, some of the other cities. Finally, ended up in Springfield. So it is said that President Lincoln had 19 different funerals. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to come back to that point later. Okay. okay. Now, when he arrived in Springfield, well, before he got there. There was a little bit of controversy as to where he was going to be buried in Springfield. Okay. And I know that she was very big on this point. Yes. Yes. This is where she, she said, okay, originally they talked her into Springfield. Robert did. Okay. Now, now that it is Springfield, they were going to bury him at a location, and I forget the guy's name, the name of the tomb, but it was property that was set aside. There was $50,000 donated to build his tomb and monument, and this is where Mary Todd said, absolutely not. I remember when my husband made the comment that one day he wanted to be buried in Oak Ridge Cemetery. So Oak Ridge or Oak Hill? I believe it's Ridge. Oak Ridge Cemetery. She remembers that comment. Of course, where they wanted to bury him wasn't in Oak Ridge Cemetery. They wanted to bury him in the center of town up on top of a hill so that people from the train station could see this massive monument and it would become a tourist attraction for Springfield. Right. Okay. She said, absolutely not. If he's going to Springfield, I want to bury it in Oak, Oak Ridge. Oak Ridge? Mm -hmm. okay. So, when the train arrived in Springfield, it was brought to Oak Ridge Cemetery and it was placed in a receiving vault. We have a picture of that receiving vault back in the day when this happened with armed guards guard, or guarding the, the tomb. Um, in that tomb, uh, President Lincoln and his son was placed. Mm -hmm. um, the funeral took place there, the original funeral. <laughs> there were several after the 19th. Um, crowds came. There was a, you know, the, the, the decorated hearse with the horses and the plumes and all that, brought them there and all that other stuff like that. We have pictures of, of that. Um, not that we took, but archive photos because we weren't here at that time. Um, but now we're going to show you some footage of what that tomb looks like today. I actually have some video and there is um, some pictures there. So... We'll take a quick little break right now and we'll show you that footage.
Okay, so he was placed in the receiving vault May 4th of 1865, correct? Correct. Now, this is going to tie into our next section that we have as well, but then we're going to come back and we'll get some more stories that you want to talk about, but um, the potential for hauntings. Mm. Why is this place so haunted? And here's the thing about Abraham Lincoln. If you look into the... Uh, Panic D database and some of the research that we posted, Abraham Lincoln has been cited in various different locations, not just here at the tomb. Right. He's been spotted at the White House by presidents mm -hmm. and by Winston Churchill, by the way, yes. who actually reported it. He's been spotted up at um, Ford's Theater where it was shot. We believe that that's a residual haunting. Um, he's been spotted across the uh, place, what's the house, where he passed away across from Fort there, He's been spotted there. Um, he's been spotted at uh, Henry Ford Museum, different Ford, um, but around his uh, chair, chair that he was assassinated in. He's been spotted there. Uh, he's been spotted walking the streets of Springfield. He's been spotted at the courthouse um, that where he used to practice law. He's been spotted in several different locations, which leads me to believe his soul is not at rest because because <laughs> he's had 19 different funerals, the coffin has been moved 17 different times, and has been opened five times. So he hasn't had a proper interment. And that's five times after he got to Springfield. Yes. Because in each of the cities that the train, the funeral train stopped, they would open up the, the casket and let everybody come and... and View the coffin President and Lincoln and the was body. the first president that was embalmed, right? Which afforded them the ability to travel like that and show the body. He had somebody that traveled with him that would touch the body up. I mean, come on, it was, you know, it needed a little bit of work along the way. However, the, you know, I, I feel so bad for the guy, and I'm really, and I mentioned this to Marianne before we started the show, when they did the final burial if they did a proper interment. I, I would like to, you know, if there was a proper ceremony, final resting place. Because not only was it, you know, like they moved it again, it's a final spot. The, okay, we'll get to that point. But anyways, <laughs> <clears throat> very, very, no wonder he's being seen. I mean, his, his, his soul's on at rest. He, he, so, he moved around a lot. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of it could have been residual hauntings, too. But, yeah. Anyways. Okay. So, May 4th, 1865, put in a receiving vault. At that point, they opened a coffin again. Okay. Um, what's the next date? Well, they moved him from the temporary receiving vault into uh, a specially built temporary vault. Uh, on December 21st of Which 1865. We'll show you pictures of where we think that was. That doesn't exist anymore. Right, it was We'll show it was you demolished. some pictures here while we're talking. Okay, uh, so from there, then, that was December 21st, 1865. Right. So that's from May, December. When they moved them to the temporary vault, they opened the coffin again. <laughs> okay, September 19th, 1871. Uh, this is where it was placed in the the tomb somewhat where he is located now, but it wasn't finished. The right, construction the wasn't construction finished. wasn't completed on it yet. Again, they opened the coffin. <laughs> so that's three times. Okay, October 9th. Oh, before you... Okay. Shall we tell them about the coffin? Oh yeah, not only did they open the coffin, they've changed coffins. Right. So the original coffin that was in you know, seen in Washington and seen by the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people during the, does not exist anymore. Yeah. That coffin that is That was not replaced the same in September. Right. Um, of 1871. The walnut outer coffin was replaced with an iron coffin. The iron coffin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so then October 9th of 1874, um, was, that wasn't the iron coffin again because Go ahead, what that said. The iron coffin didn't fit into the sarcophagus. 
right? right. So then right. you put them into yet another coffin. Yeah. So at this point, they were trying to um, place his coffin into the sarcophagus that they had created for it, uh, and it was uh, made out of white marble. Well, when they tried to do that, the iron coffin was just a yee bit too big. too big. So my guess is that they probably built this based on the measurements of the walnut coffin uh, and didn't make any changes after mm -hmm. they switched it up. Um, but it was too large to fit into the sarcophagus, so they replaced it with a new red cedar coffin. And then they dedicated the tomb um, just a few days later uh, on October 15th of 1874. Now it does say that they dedicated the tomb. It doesn't say that they reinterred him with the clergy and things like that. Right. They said they dedicated the tomb. Okay. Correct. Just a, something I'm pointing out right there. <laughs> okay, so November 7th, 1876, this is when the uh, Oh, uh, the creative fellows from Chicago came down and tried to steal the body. And actually, they were right. going to hold the body for ransom. I know one of the demands was going to be $200,000, and there was something else. But uh, there's there's shows out there to talk about that. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and one of their little cohorts, actually, was a Secret Service agent. So, yeah, they got busted. However, that wasn't the only theft that they caught wind that was going to happen. So Correct. this is where it starts to get interesting and they start hiding the body in different locations. Um, and what was the year where they built the guardhouse? 1895. It's not so time we're not yet. to that point. Nope, yet. not time yet. So, uh, okay, where are we at then? So it was 1876, November 7th, 1876 um, was when the thieves tried to okay steal the body and they broke the, they ended up breaking a, a piece of the sarcophagus off as they tried to do that um, it was later repaired um, so November 9th of 1876 which was a couple of days later right the coffin was replaced again coffin replaced in sarcophagus which was then closed and sealed mm -hmm. okay so, November 13th, 1876, the coffin was removed during the daytime to place uh, near the northwest wall of the catacombs to be transferred later that day. Later that day... At night! At night, the coffin was removed again to a secret location on the east side of the Lincoln tomb, inside, so they're basically hiding the coffin or the yeah, body. supposedly near the base of the obelisk inside. Um, okay, so November 14th, the coffin's placed into a wooden case at the secret location on the east side, so they put the coffin inside a wooden case. It's not in the marble sarcophagus, which they're trying to hide from people that that's actually where it's at, but it's not in there. Right, he was not placed in there uh, again for quite some time, but I'm quest curious um, if this is when it was a wooden pile of just lumber. This, yeah, they this tried is, to hide it yeah. under wood. Yes, yeah. so I'm, I'm curious if this wooden case is actually just piles of wooden piles lumber, of wood. which is what, what I've heard. Because the, the reason why they were moving this, and then November 18th, uh, they moved it, November 20th they moved it, all that same year. Um, they received, one of the guards received a, was it a it postcard? Was a, it was a postcard. I think. Um, saying that there was going to be an attempt again to try to right. steal the body. Mm -hmm. so. yeah, November 20th of 1878, um, they exhumed and reburied him in the same location on the north side of the tomb in response to an anonymous threat that was received by the caretaker uh, via a postcard. But they, when they did that, they noticed that there had, it, it hadn't been touched since they moved it two days prior. Okay. So, which brings us to April 14th, 1887, which is nine years later, okay? So they take the coffin to Memorial Hall, and they open it again for identification. they got to make sure this is Abraham Lincoln in this coffin. Right, because then he's going to be buried. Yeah, he's going to be buried beneath the floor in a catacomb, um which they thought would have been it's forever, final. Right. it's final, 
but it wasn't. It wasn't. It was temporary. So they actually did begin to put him into cement. Um, only four feet of cement, though, at right. that point. Um, so we come to around, uh, actually, March 10th of 1900. And he noticed that the tomb itself was not engineered very well, and it's starting to fall apart. Right. They noticed it's starting to really disintegrate. Yeah. Disintegrate is what they were really saying. It started crumbling and disintegrating um, in 1899. They really noticed that, and they're like, hmm, I think we need we to do, do something, something about it. So guess what? They move him again. So he's moved again. Um, 1900, the coffin's removed to a temporary vault dug into the hillside behind the monument, secret place, blah, 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 all that other stuff. So basically he's moved again until they get the reconstruction done. And April 24th of 1901, the coffin is removed to the reconstructed Lincoln tomb, reconstructed Lincoln tomb. Okay, so July 10th of 1901, the coffin is temporarily removed to an empty crypt in the south wall of the catacomb in order to build a permanent crypt under the floor of the catacomb. Right, so he was moved into his tomb April 24th, and then they decided to move him by July 10th to another part so that they can build a permanent crypt. Yes. Okay, so September 26, 1901, guess what? They take the coffin again to Memorial Hall for identification and open it again. Again. Make sure that that's him in there. Which leads us to September 26, 1901, final resting place. Final Mary's in there too, right? Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, go ahead. All right. She's going to interrupt me no, because go ahead. she has another conspiracy theory. But, <laughs> Okay, 10 feet of concrete, he's, been, he's buried beneath what was what you saw maybe already or I'm going to show you here in the video. Um, he's not in that sarcophagus, the red one, that's in the video and the pictures and stuff. He's actually buried 10 feet below that in cement. Correct. They take the coffin that he's in, could be a cardboard box for all I know. What is, what is it? I think it's a wooden box. It's supposed to be a red, metal cage. red cedar. Red cedar. Okay. Um, they put it into a, uh iron cage with Mrs. Lincoln. She's next to him. And they bury them both. Boom. Although across the hall is the thing for Mary Lincoln. She's not there. She's with him. I read that in another article that was run in request by Robert that they be buried together. So... That's the final resting place, but like I said, I don't know whether they did a proper interment for that location because here it is, a new location. Go ahead, what's your cons conspiracy theory that you found? Well, some people believe that he is not buried there at all because this final um, encasement in the cement, they think that uh, they there are some conspiracists who think that they removed the body and took it to some other undisclosed location or no one knows where it is um, that's currently alive now. Um, and there isn't actually anyone buried there. So Who knows? Yeah. He, but he what else did you find out about that 10-foot thing? That, I mean, you told me about the 10-foot well, thing. Uh, it's actually quite interesting. Um, it was actually Robert Lincoln who decided that he wanted this 10 foot of cement uh, placed on top of his, his father. Uh, he wanted him buried down beneath 10 feet of this cement because he had heard about this idea from George Pullman. Um, George Pullman was the railroad kingpin. Pullman cars. Pullman cars, yes. And he had apparently treated his workers really, really bad. And so he was afraid that when he died that his real workers were going to 
take and steal his body and hold it for ransom to try to get some money for, you know, all their hard work, apparently, that they didn't get compensated for. And so he asked because uh, of Lincoln's attempted theft of his body. That was what brought it to his attention that his co-worker, her, his workers might actually do that, um, is that he would be buried under 10 feet of concrete or cement. And so when Lincoln, when Robert Lincoln was going to have his dad's body buried for the final time, at least that was his hope and what we believe to be, um, he pulled that idea from Pullman that we should bury him under 10 feet of cement. And uh, so Pullman died at 1897, and so he had that done. And then 1901, Robert Lincoln said, that's what I want my dad's to be. So it's kind of, it ties the two of them together because Pullman had it done because he was afraid that his co or his rail workers would try to steal his body like the conspirators tried to steal Lincoln's body. And then Lincoln says, hey, um, if if he had it under 10 feet of, to protect the body, I want my dad's under 10 feet to protect the body too. And so it ties the two of them together. And just to throw another wrench in there, in 1896, when H.H. H. Holmes was um, put to death, mm -hmm. he requested that his body also be buried under 10 feet of cement. So all these 10 feet of cement I'm kind of interested in. Yeah, obviously. So, yeah. <laughs> I just find it very exciting. I mean, especially in this case where you tie Lincoln and Pullman together. You know, Link, Robert Lincoln wants his dad buried under it because of Pullman's idea to be buried under it. And Pullman only had the idea because of the attempted theft of Lincoln, President Lincoln's body. And he said, I don't want that to happen to me. So it ties those two right back together again. Well, the next thing we need to talk about is personal experiences, okay? Okay. Um, as far as paranormal, I didn't really experience anything. I watched the videos that we took and... Right. Um, well, when, I w when we were there... Looked through the pictures. When we were there and I was in the actual burial chamber, mm -hmm. I heard whispering... And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's one of the claims. But then I saw people come around the corner, <laughs> and so there were other people that had shown up. When I was first watching that video, actually, I think I played the video with the audio. Um, there was, like, you heard strange noises, and you heard footsteps and stuff like that. But the thing is, though, the chamber, when you, when you go inside it, you're encased in marble. I mean, right. the whole thing is marble. So sounds are echoing. You can actually hear that door opening up as people are coming in, which is a strange noise, and, and people talking, just echoes and stuff like that. One thing that did kind of stick out with me was the smell. Yes. It did have a stench that only thing I could think about to explain was a cross between the flowers in a funeral home and mildew. You put the two together, it had kind of that sweet, flowery, mildewy smell. Well, I thought it, when I walked in, I immediately, like, thought of Hillview Manor because I thought it had the same sort of odor as when you go and walk through the decaying portions of Hillview yeah, Manor. like that mildewy um, As far of. as the flowery part, um, those were, were uh, the wreath was live yeah. flowers that so there's still live flowers at which his, that scent would promenade right. through the through the whole yeah. place. Um, did you do audio recording there? No, I did not. You did not. I did look through the pictures. Um, didn't really see anything. Again, watch the other video. If, if we just put this together real quick, we were just there a couple of days ago. Well, we may go over the stuff again and maybe do an update if we catch anything. Um, but first. You know, a lot of places we go to, it's like right away, you just like, oh, yeah, there's something going on here. But I really didn't have that feeling there. No. Um, mm -hmm. It was a, a solemn mm -hmm. feeling, pain and respect. Um, but there's some other things that we came across when we're at the location that I would like to talk about, though, mm -hmm. that we found was quite interesting. Yeah. Um, 
let's talk about the uh, guardhouse okay. first. Okay. Okay. Um, because that's the first thing you see when you pull up to the parking lot is this huge house. It looks like a castle. It looks like a castle. But when did they build the guardhouse? 1895. 1895. And that's when the state took it over, I believe. They built the guardhouse. Uh, and then somebody lived there to watch the tomb. Right. Um, we do lived there for seven, there, there was uh, 75 years where there was somebody that was there all the time. And, and they added on to it a few years later. Right. Um, and now I think it's offices. It is, yes. And I'm, and if I'm not mistaken, I read somewhere that um, one of the three last people to actually see Lincoln before he was sealed over for the last time um, was actually uh, one of the people who lived in the guardhouse and his wife. Hmm. Um, they were, they were, you know, oops. The yeah, last time they opened a coffin in 1901. 1901, yes. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of, kind of exciting that it was actually those who were living in the guardhouse who actually did get to partake in that. Another thing that you noticed, and I know that you asked the lady that was there when we left. We walked in, there was a guy there, and then right. when we left, there was a lady there. But um, as we were leaving, you asked about the ceiling in the rotunda when you first go in. It looks like there was some sort of smudges or something. Yeah. When actually, you look at the pictures, and we'll show the picture right now, but there's actually handprints in there. Right. What did, what did so they say when, when I was uh, when I came out, we came out um, of the t of the actual burial chamber. We came down the the hall and back into the main rotunda. And when I did, I kind of happened to like start looking around in there because we didn't spend a lot of time in there when we first came because we we're like we want to go see the burial chamber. Mm -hmm. So when we came out of the burial chamber, I started to look around and I noticed up at the ceiling. Um, it we'll looked right it now. looked sort of like it, it was sooty and there was handprints across like somebody drug their hand across the ceiling and I'm like well, that's pretty strange so I I asked the lady who was the I guess you would call her the docent um, I asked her I said you know did you guys used to burn you know fires or anything in here like why is the ceiling you know so sooty and ha that handprint and she's like Oh no! It just looks that dark because around the edges there's the lights, and I'm like, no, 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 no! It looks. Sooty. She's like, no, no, no! It's the. It, and I'm it's like, the okay, whatever. It's the light. If you look at the picture, you can actually see. But I took some pictures because you can actually see hand. It looks like handprints going through sooty dirt on the ceiling. Not that so, that's paranormal. It's just. Kind it's of just kind of weird, and the fact that she's like, no, it's not there. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it is. It's right there. Um, and she was just totally insistent that it was only uh, because around the periphery there was lights yeah. lighting up the room, and I was just n not seeing the fact that it was lights that were doing that. I was like, no. I wish not. the guy was there because I would have. I, I plan on going back and just hammering them with stuff because that's where you get a lot of great stuff. Mm -hmm. You go to these places like this, and those people who, what's the word used? Docent. Docents, or even. Um, the uh, park rangers or something like that. These people are a wealth of information. They are. The only thing is, is when you start to talk ghosts, especially with national park people or something like they that, they can go either way. They can either blow you off and then they don't want to talk to you, or they could give you some more information. So you're taking a chance there. Mm -hmm. However, you always bring that up maybe last. <laughs> yeah. You know, you just hit them with the history stuff and, you know, that kind of thing. And, hey, is it true this, this, and this? And they kind of clarify stuff. We did that at the the um, um, Lincoln's house, you know, which we'll talk about in another episode. But I was asking the park ranger, you know, what happened? That da 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 Right. And, uh, just a wealth of information because these people basically dedicate it's a passion for them more than a job and mm -hmm. a lot of people are volunteers too so yeah I kind of I kind of wish that Lincoln was from Ohio because you know we're very into Lincoln and I would love yeah. to go and be a docent at one of the Lincoln yeah. places you know I wish there was something close by where we live for Lincoln True. you know but but anyways okay so the last thing that we want to talk about what you want to talk about I think um, I'll go over my notes while you're talking okay. about this. but um, 
<laughs> okay. So we were getting ready to leave. And, and I was playing was with the, you know, fingerprints on the ceiling. Thing. And I was ready to leave. The smell was kind of getting to me. And there was like a kids group coming in. And I'm like, I don't want to be in there with this noise and, and all that stuff when these kids get in here. So I, I went outside. And then Marianne came out after me. And uh, we went to the car. Actually, we took some pictures around the back of where the, the um, we thought the temporary tomb was and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. back to the car. Um, <clears throat> we get in the car. <laughs> And I recorded, no, we get in the car and we leave. Mm -hmm. So we're leaving and we get outside of the cemetery and started down the road to get um, back to downtown Springfield. And I asked Marianne what she thought about the piece of sarcophagus. sarcophagus. And I was and like, she's what? like, what sarcophagus? What, what are you, you talking, talking about? about? And I said, well, I, I got a map of Springfield of the different locations and stuff, and underneath of it was a piece of sarcophagus. And she's like, I didn't see that. Well, she was tied up with the handprints looking up and not didn't look at the thing. So and, I said, and in my defense, besides that I was looking at the ceiling, they had these maps sitting on top of the case that yeah. had this in it, and you're like, oh, so this is like a, a stand for pamphlets. Yeah. So I took, I think I took a video of it, um, well, I had to have, and I thought, well, I'll, I'll read it later. Some, uh, sometimes I do that just to get through, I'll take a picture or video, and then I'll read it later, what it mm -hmm. says. Um, so she's like, she's starting to get bummed. You I know? was kind of bummed. And I do everything I can to keep my wife happy, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because if she's happy, I'm, you know, I don't want to say happy, I'm just like, I'm not going to get depressed. <laughs> okay, so... I'm like, okay, we got to turn around. We're this close. But, yeah, you know, we were literally I 500 said, feet away. We'll go back. So I drove back, and I told her where it was and go look at it and, and that kind of stuff. And then you asked her about that piece of sarcophagus that was under there. And we have a video because I recorded you when you came back out as to exactly what she said. Mm -hmm. And we're going to play that video right now. For the podcast, I'll extract just the audio. But uh, go ahead and listen to that. Okay, so the piece of the sarcophagus that's located inside of the tomb is not necessarily the piece that they broke off when they were trying to steal his body back in the day. Um, it actually is just a piece that they found in the 1930s when they were down doing some work. One of the workers uh, noticed something sticking up out of the dirt and they actually found that and they pulled it out and they started pulling out all these pieces of this and they're like oh my gosh this is the pieces of it the, the uh, um, sarcophagus? sarcophagus but it it's not enough they didn't find enough pieces of it to actually piece it back together there's not actually enough um, so they only have a so that's a piece from pieces. the original sarcophagus that he's buried down pieces. there now yeah so they replaced it because they felt that when they stole his body originally, they popped the top off and they broke the side and they said, this could happen again. So they got made him a, a new one. They did put that back on display though for a mm. while so that it kind of appeared as if he was there, but he wasn't. Um, but that's why he got a new one. And then they eventually just kind of put that off to the side and they think that when they were doing some restorations, a crane may have accidentally hit it and broke it. And so then they just kind of put it off to the side then and it got buried and then it was found again in the 30s. Interesting. Yeah. All right. All right, so that's what the lady told you. Right. However, you, as we were preparing for this, you found some more interesting information about those pieces of sarcophagus. Right. All right, so why don't you talk about that a little bit. I actually have a picture, the, the dual, what's the photo? Stereoscope. Stereoscope picture of the sarcophagus the way it originally was and we'll show that picture now but go ahead and, and talk about what you okay. found. Okay so that original sarcophagus uh, photo is probably the stereoscope then from 1874 um, or 1875 or 1876 because that's when he was actually placed in that sarcophagus. So in 1874 they placed him in the sarcophagus and he stayed in there Till 1876 when theoretically those thieves were going to try to steal his body um, and then they 
hid the actual coffin, and so the coffin was not in the sarcophagus anymore at that point. Actually, here's exactly what happened. So November 9th, 1876, is when supposedly they replaced it back in the sarcophagus, which was then closed and sealed. However, this remember that whole, like during the day they did this, and mm -hmm. during the nighttime they did that? Right. On the 13th of November, mm -hmm. they moved the coffin. Okay, but not the sarcophagus. At nighttime, they hid the coffin on the, on the 13th. Mm -hmm. So now the coffin is not in the sarcophagus right, on November 13th, 1876. Empty. Okay, so it's empty um, from 76 until supposedly 86. So 1886, supposedly, they put his coffin back inside the sarcophagus until 1899. Whether that's true or not, hard to say, um, but supposedly he's placed back in there again, um, and then in 1899 they noticed that this building starts crumbling, the monument's crumbling, it's not built properly. 89, 1899, 18, no, yeah, 99, 99, right. 1899. and so then, <laughs> and then they go ahead and they uh, start to fix it, so when they start to fix it, so Supposedly, he's no longer in the sarcophagus anymore again. And then when they do have it completely, you know, redesigned and fixed um, in 1901, he's reburied 10 feet down underneath the um, tomb area that we can go into today. And that sarcophagus is placed from 1901 to 1930 there inside of, of the tomb just as a monument. Um, then, in but 19... I'm sure they don't tell people that, do they? Uh, no. Uh, I don't know that they did or didn't. Hmm. Uh, although most people, I think, would probably have known that he was buried 10 feet under cement at that point. Although, I don't know. Um, but then, Wasn't in 1930, there? May of 1930, they begin this second reconstruction of the building. During this reconstruction, remember, they're going to remodel the whole interior and things like that, but they also did some exterior work. Um, so during this time, they need to move the sarcophagus out. Mm -hmm. So they actually take it and they put it outside onto the, onto the lawn. They just have it sitting out there in lawn, onto the lawn. And For they how go, long? Uh, from May of 1930 until September of 1930. It's actually sitting out there. June, July, August. September. September. Yeah. So. Four months. Set months. Right. 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 Um, so. The original sarcophagus of Abraham Lincoln. We'll just sit it outside. Right. We're just going to sit it outside while we dismantle the monument and, and do all the repair work. Well, at some point while it's outside, it gets broken. Of course it does. Nobody knows who did it. Nobody knows when they did it. Um, we do know from an article that was done July 5th of 1930, we know it's still whole. We know that because there's a photograph. We'll show you that picture right now. There's a photograph of um, one of the caretakers mm -hmm. with it. And, and this was done by July 5th, July 5th of 1930. 1930. Okay. Um, there was a photographer that had come from the newspaper to take photographs of the um, state of affairs of the, the reconstruction. You know, how was it going? Well, by September 15th, another reporter comes to take more pictures, and he's like... Um, what happened to the sarcophagus? It's over. It's in pieces, and you know, supposedly in the newspaper the following day they say you know hey it, pieces of it have been even taken away by souvenir hunters and things like that. So uh, September nineteenth, the supervising architect of the reconstruction, um, C. Herrick Hammond, is quoted in the newspaper as believing. Um, that the destruction was actually the work of vandals or souvenir hunters, and it must have been done by them because it had to have been done at night 
or it would have been observed by the workmen or visitors who were coming to see the tomb. And um, there was even a minister from Virginia who supposedly had picked up a piece of the, uh, of the sarcophagus, thought that it had actually been thrown away because it was just kind of strewn about, and um, took it as a so memento. So she told you that they started coming out of the ground or something like that, right? Right. Well, they had noticed it in the night. She said in the 1930s when they were doing some work. Well, I thought she said 70s, but okay. 30s. She said 30s. It turns out it's the 70s. Oh. Um, but he had this this minister though. He returned it when he realized that that was not the case. It wasn't thrown out. He did return it. Um, but it was, all these pieces were all broken up and, and they're like, oops. Yeah. Uh, there's another theory that it was um, a crane from the reconstruction that kind of knocked into it and broke it. And then I found, that's what she had mentioned. And then another um, is that there was a, truck at the reconstruction that backed into it knocked and, it and knocked it well, off. Supposedly it was real easy. The top is what got broke, right? The top of your office. Well, or the whole the thing, whole thing, the whole is, thing supposedly is supposedly in pieces. in pieces, yes. And So the um, original sarcophagus pieces. Right. Whatever. The original coffin, who knows what who happened knows to what that. Who knows what happened to that. They probably burned it as a, yeah. you know, firewood or something for all we know. Um, but the State Journal Register back in 2013 um, did kind of go back and say, you know, they, they said that this happened, but it, now it may have been a truck that had backed into it during the reconstruction uh, while it was left outside, and then, you know, these pieces, then what happened to them? Well, apparently, um, they were placed in a trash heap, basically, uh, in a pit underneath the vaults for Mary Todd and her three sons. Um, and they were just kind of thrown in there then and kept there until 1978 when I don't know what they were doing, and it's something that I really still want to research, but some workers were underneath the vaults, and they're like, what's that sticking out of the dirt over there? It looks kind of interesting and they found that it was pieces of marble and they're like oh here's another piece and so they ended up taking out between 30 and 35 pieces of this marble that they end up re um kind of figuring out that are actually the vault or actually the sarcophagus um of president lincoln and uh according to the docent uh they don't have enough pieces of this to put it back together, that too many pieces had been stolen. Although we did find a picture. And we'll show you that right now. That if you look at this picture, there's just, they're large pieces, and there's a lot of pieces. I'm sure that there are pieces missing. Mm -hmm. I am certain of that. But I certainly also think that we could probably piece that back together and, and, and at least make filler for the pieces that are missing because okay. there's just a ton of that that is actually still present um, but when they do knock this over and break it whoever it, it happened to be that's when they made that red marble or whatever that we see today that's actually on display for the sarcophagus mm -hmm. that sits there now um, but they find this in 1978, right? They find all these pieces in 1978, but they don't put them on display. Mm -hmm. They put them in a storage facility, apparently inside of the tomb, um, but not in public view. And it's not until 2013 when a single piece of it gets put on display and it is still there today. Which was the piece that you missed. The piece that I missed because I was looking at the ceiling. Lindsay photographer missed it. But I did go back and I did look at it and yeah. I did take some pictures of that too. Um, but apparently one of the maintenance men 
uh, built a cabinet for it. His name was Carl Williams, and apparently he was some but very the good builder. In a picture now. And um, he built this cabinet to hold um, the piece of the sarcophagus that is on display now. And uh, they claim that they had wanted to put these on display for such a long time, but they, you know, from 78 on, but they didn't have a way to display them until uh, Mr. Williams decided to build this um, cabinet. And it's, piece. and it's only this tiny little cabinet and it's one piece um, of the sarcophagus that, that is actually on display. So with all this movement and accidents or whatever, <laughs> opening up the coffin and doing all this and all that. No wonder Abraham Lincoln's spirit roams the earth. I, I you know, there's no wonder. Mm -hmm. But anyways, uh, I think that's going to wrap this episode up. Do you have anything else? Well, the only other thing that I had, and I always have one more thing when you ask always that too, is um, Herbert Hoover, President oh, Hoover. Yeah. Yeah, when go ahead and he talk about that. We have a picture. Go ahead. When he went um, to participate, really, um, in the rededication ceremony um, at the Lincoln tomb, it was Jul June 17 of 1931, and he uh, made a speech for the rededication, and the speech was supposedly done at 2.30 in the afternoon, and, you know... They have his whole speech listed. But I noticed um, when I read through his speech, I thought it was very similar, uh, some of the wording of President Lincoln's speech in Gettysburg, just the way he says, you know, um, about, you know. Do you have the speech? Do you want to read it? I, I, I have it. Well, go ahead. Okay, so... Here's a, just a couple of excerpts from his speech. Um, so he says, Nothing that we may say here can add to the knowledge or devotion of our people to the memory of Abraham Lincoln. Nothing we may do can add to his stature in history. All that words can convey has long since been uttered by his grateful countrymen. This is an occasion of sentiment rather than an occasion of words, for if we cannot by expression in words convey those great things of the spirit which inspire a nation, we gather here today that we of our nation, generation may again pay tribute to the man who did not only save the Union and gave freedom to race, to a race, but who recreated the ideals and inspirations of the American life. And that's just an excerpt, but in that excerpt, just so many of those words are just sound just like what Lincoln said in we'll, Gettysburg. We'll find the uh, Gettysburg address. All right, so um, part of Lincoln's speech to uh, this is Gettysburg the address. Gettysburg address. Well, the address in Gettysburg is called the Gettysburg Address, but it, the, re, the dedication center right, um, was, Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this, but in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, what we cannot hollow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above the poor power to add and de or detract. The world will little, little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. Um, of course, none of this sounds anything like what I said it sounds like. Yeah, it does. It, 
It is for us, the living, rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task of remaining before us that from these honored dead we should take increased devotion to that cause for which they have gave the last full measure of devotion that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall give new birth of freedom, that government of the people by the people for the people shall not perish from the earth. That has the same cadence, the same sentiment type of thing like he wrote that in the spirit of Lincoln or something, that speech. That's the point you're trying to make. Yeah, but at the same point, like I, the wording, it just, to me, when I read it the very first time, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's like, sounds just like wording from the Gettysburg Address. But I guess you're right, the same cadence. Nothing we say here can add, like, nothing we say here can mm -hmm. make it go away to the memory of the people who gave their lives here, to the memory of Lincoln. Um, this is an occasion of sentiment, you know, we gather here today, and it's just, we well, gather here today on this, on, on this battlefield, you know, I just... As soon yeah. as I read that, I was like, oh my gosh. Okay, do you have anything else? No, that's all. No, that's all? All right, so this is Panic D number 1973, Abraham Lincoln's Tomb in Springfield, Illinois. Um, that's going to end this episode of Our Haunted Travels. So till next time. Thanks for listening and watching now. If you like this video, like to see more in the future please be sure to hit the subscribe button and give us a like below also if you have any comments or, or suggestions for our future videos please leave them in the comment section thanks for watching this episode of our haunted travels <laughs>